Panther fans, get ready for a deep dive on all 22 because the film don't lie. And guys, before we get to that film, uh, hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas uh, with the family. How was everything? It was good. I'm still trying to work off uh, all that stuff I was eating. Still got the peanut clusters that I'm still working on, so uh, it just keeps on going. And, and Mike, when you're doing that, do you just have to get, get rid of them? I the do the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way. I got to eat. I was on the rower yesterday, and I was all I could think about was the chocolate peanut clusters. <laughs> That's bad. That is bad. We were good. I man, I had family in town. Kids are in town. Ate a lot of food. Just trying to work out, but this cold weather makes it tough to get outside and do a little bummed. jogging. I had I had all four of my kids home. That's awesome. And uh, uh, my oldest came back from California, and uh, you know, just loving up on them. That's it. You know, I don't care how big they get; they still my babies. That's it. So it was great, great time with family. But hey, uh, work rolls on, and the Panthers closed out the calendar year and regular season at home in style with a uh, win against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now they go down to the Falcons' new home. The Mercedes-Benz Stadium, yep. I've been told, thought it was a dome. Now it's a stadium, retractable roof and all that. Oh, I didn't know that. So I'm not an architect. Stadium, okay. I wasn't in on the architectural planning. <laughs> I would close that hole. But anyway, <laughs> um, they uh, defeated, the Panthers defeated the Falcons 2017 in week nine. So, of course, we're going to talk about what it's going to take to do it right here in week 17. And the uh, playoff possibilities are crazy. And the NFL comes down to the last week. They put all the games that matter at the same time. Which is awesome. Oh, I'm telling you. That's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. And uh, the New Year's Day will change a couple show things. We'll talk about that as well before we end. But here again, let's talk special deliveries. Because Mm. the Panthers special teams came through in a game that was not a Monet. Yeah. It was more of a Picasso. Hmm. Y'all know what I mean by that? Yes, it was a little bit rough looking to the <laughs> untrained eye. Right, right? But they got it done. But the end result was beautiful. Yeah. But let's talk special teams. I mean, they they huge part. Scored a touchdown, had a fake punt. A lot of things went on. Let's kind of dive into some of those things that uh, Thomas McGahee and Chase Blackburn's unit did to ensure victory because you're going to need that mm-hmm. going through the playoffs. Yeah, you know, we were talking before we went on air about when's the last time we've seen, you know, kickoff or or, or, or a punt, uh, you know, uh, for a touchdown. And, you know, the coming chunks, and it's been a long time. What did Siri say? 2000, I think we said 2011. I was think the last kickoff return. Kickoff return. And, and then when you go before that, I mean, it goes back to Smitty and, and Rod Smart back in the early 2000s. So, I mean, it's been a long time, so to see the special teams really, to me, it really impacted this game, and I think that was the, the game changer was Bird's touchdown. And when you break that down, and I, and I kind of got a smile on my face because this is how coaches dial it up. When they're on that chalkboard and the X's and O's, <laughs> this is how they dial it up. And I think film work set this play up. Oh, okay. Bird's touchdown was set up in film work because when you look at it from the end zone look, Bird is on the right hash. So they got a pre-read knowing that the kicker was going to kick the ball to that side of the hash. Mm. And um, so Bird didn't have to run over five yards to get set up and think about where his blocks were. He was already set up. He could get a peek downfield, can catch the ball cleanly, and take off running. And when you see that the, the guy set up a wall, they set a wall to the left side, they set a wall to the right side, Bird just comes through there cleanly. But one of the key blocks – that I saw was Fozzie Whitaker. He had two key blocks. So two. he gets he, he get he gets that guy that is sitting free in the hole. He picks him up enough to get in his way. As Bird clears, Fozzie spins out and then he actually clips the other guy that frees Bird for that touchdown. So um there's a lot of key plays that really made me smile because this is football. This is an X and O from the chalkboard playing out. Cause they always say every offensive play or or, or special team is drawn up for a touchdown. And that was key right there. Yeah, and I tell you, you know, looking at that kickoff return, uh, two guys that had key blocks were Chris Manhurts and Brian Cox. And I've been on that wedge when I was a young player in the NFL. And <laughs> as a bigger guy, and those coverage guys are coming down, they're like just screaming down the field. They're athletic. 
Um, they know how to juke in to be able to get your feet set, get a base, and get good blocks right there. That really paved the way for Fozzie going through and getting the lead block and getting downfield. But uh, as, as dazzling as that was, and it got six points on the board, you know, I think what was equally important was that fake punt that yeah. Michael Pilardi ran. And first thing, you know, it's a perfect place for the, on the field to do that. It was around the 44, 45 yard line. Um, you're not going to give up too great a field position if it does fail, but you don't want to do it in a situation where it's so obvious that you might go yeah. for it. So it was well timed. And I think, um, you know, they had everything set up really nice because they got good blocking up front. They had um, Ed Dixon and Colin Jones out there on the left side of the personal protector and then a tight end there. They ran simple routes. You know, Colin Jones kind of broke to the outside and came underneath, so it was a simple route for him to be able to get it. If that showed, Pilardi looked dialed in no matter what to getting it to Ed Dixon, and he's a big, strong target, and we've seen him be uh, a very productive tight end for this team, so he, he just kind of heaves it up to him right there and would have been a catch if – you know, the defensive player right there hadn't completely tackled him basically yeah. before that pass got there. So it was well executed, even though it wasn't a completion. The pass interference acted like that. And they end up getting three points on that. And a day where there was not a lot of scoring and a lot of touchdowns being made, it was great to get another three points on the board and was a big difference in this game. Well, it was a funny story. Yesterday in the uh, locker room, I was talking to Michael Pilardi, having a real good funny conversation with him you know he's talking about his qbr right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know not you know being hurt because he wanted the completion <clears throat> but one of the funny things he talked about was going back and watching film and because those guys were leaving you know normally you get those rushers hot off the edge and he said he looked at the guy hot off the edge on film and you see it here the guy froze and it was like oh the punter. Mm -hmm. right. So imagine the shock that went through that whole special teams unit for the Bucks because, I mean, here again, this is the rebirth of Riverboat Ron right there. <laughs> yeah. It is. Nobody mentioned that it's part. It's still risk, man. Yep. Fourth Gut, down. Gutsy called. I'm sure Thomas McGay, he was pushing for it. It was fourth and eight. Yep. Fourth yeah. And eight. It wasn't was fourth and three or two yeah. or one. Fourth and yeah. eight. But you know what? You have to have a tendency to break a tendency. And the Panthers have uh, punted all season now. They pull that out. And and here's the interesting thing we talked about this Sunday night. Now teams will have to practice again. Yeah. Absolutely. So you they'll, they'll have to prepare for yep. it now. Um, speaking of prepare, as we as we move forward and talk about holiday cleaning, because, hey, as we know, there were some things in that game that, that have to be cleaned up. Um, one of them was the, the Panthers gave up a, a, a big number of chunk plays. And it's one of these things where you know you have to go in I know it's a win, but you have to go in and ask the hard questions. And I ask you guys, what did you see in that game that contributed to these chunk plays? Well, there, there, there was a big chunk play that uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they, they ran a, a, a great play, and everything worked out in this particular play. And it was a, it was a long run. Uh, you know, the Panthers had a nine-man box, and, and uh, you know, they, they cut the backside, the backside guard cuts you know, our defensive tackle, which I think was star. And then they pulled the front side guard mm -hmm. and, and got around. The, the problem with that play was that they had free releases. So the, the offensive line had free releases to get up to our second level and our linebackers. And I think that's one of our strengths is that we'll penetrate with our D line and then allows our, fr our linebackers to flow uh, east and west. And in this particular play, you know, they were able to get up on our linebackers very quickly and they had a hat on a hat, and they were able to bring the lead fullback up, up on the safety, up through the hole. Um, Coleman had a, had a, a saving, a game, you know, a, a saving touchdown play right there with the right angle. But at the end of the day, if we don't get penetration, then then we're just kind of an average defense, and and then we um, are kind of on our heels when our offense, if our defensive line gets penetration. Again, it allows our linebackers to flow. And uh, there's some times where I've just seen uncharacteristic this year as a whole probably missed tackles because you're going to have teams that are going to get big plays. That's just going to happen. But I think it's the missed tackles um, and, and the big chunk plays that we've given up that have maybe let teams stay a little bit closer in the game than they probably should. Yeah. And you saw it through the air too. 
Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, kind of going off the missed tackles route, you know, a couple of their big receptions really happened because of some missed tackles. And number one, you know, there was a nice pass to Chris Godwin. It ended up being a 70-yarder to him. And really they're playing a little bit softer coverage there. And I think it was uh, Daryl Worley just did not have a great angle on him as he's playing softer. Chris Godwin gets off the line. He gets the reception and then misses the tackle right there that would have brought it down for maybe an 8- to 10-yard gain. Instead, he's able to explode past that. Mike uh, Adams is right there to be able to try and uh, he's broken down. Looks like he's in really good position to make a play right there. But Godwin just makes a quick move and kind of stutter steps, leaves him in his tracks right there. So another missed opportunity. And really it takes Luke Keekley hustling his tail off to get all the way downfield to save that from being a touchdown. And the defense does hold right there and forces a field goal, which is fantastic being in the red zone that deep. But missed tackles, I think, is really what caused that big 70-yard play. And then another one that's not on the secondary, but I'd say is a missed tackle, was they had a really nice gain to Adam Humphreys that set them up very close in the red zone again. And Peppers had a chance on Winston. He's got his hands on him. Uh, Winston is big. He's athletic. So you can understand why he broke that tackle. But Peppers had him dead to right, right there, and could have brought him down and avoided that. Uh, was not able to kind of close the deal and get home on Winston. So that sets up a pass where he's able to get it down there to Adam Humphreys. And again, they get another big gain. But again, the Panthers D, I mean, there's some chunk plays they need to clean up, some better technique and doing some things better. But, wow, the red zone defense paid off and held him to just a field goal there too. Yeah, and a lot of that had to do with that with the pressure, even in the red zone. I mean, they would get down in the red zone. Peppers comes up with a big sack. And, uh, you know, Addison had the strip sack. Um, and then, you know, Wes Horton yeah. uh, gets in on the sack. I mean, you just had a lot of guys contributing. And that defensive front does erase – a lot of possibilities for the offense because you'll never know because they had what uh, 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 several games this year with six sacks. Yep. Yeah, okay. absolutely. That's no record, but no hobby either. Yep. That's playing some football. Well, one of the things they'll have to do is uh, contend with Atlanta's running game. Um, just in general, talk about uh, how that played into that, that win back in uh, week uh, nine. Well, you know, again – the old adage is if you stop the run, make a team one-dimensional. And I think that that's what's going to have to happen, you know, uh, against the Falcons down there. Again, we would, coaches always say when you go on the road, you bring your special teams and your defense, hmm. okay? And it was good to see the special teams impact. You know, when you, even though you see some chunk plays on this defense, we're winning the turnover battle. They're getting strip balls. We're getting those back. You're getting interceptions um, in the month of December. These are all really good things bowing into going into this uh, game against the Falcons. And I think that, you know, the Falcons, if you would say one of their strengths, yeah, they have Julio. And, and yes, they have Matty Ice. But their running game has been pretty good. Um, and when they get that running game going, and then the passing game gets going, and now you're on your heels. So I think that uh, being able to to put hat on hat, you're getting some of your guys back that have haven't been around in the last couple weeks, and so uh, I think that this is a great game to get guys going. And I think that you have to have the mindset of no, we're not already in the playoffs, and the Falcons are trying to find a way to get into the playoffs. I think you have to have a mindset that this is kind of a playoff game. We need to keep this positive momentum going into the playoffs, and I think that you really need to go down there uh, and really try to lay a hat on them. Yeah, Kevin, when we uh, look at things you want to take from the, the game against Tampa, one thing you want to capsulize is that final drive. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in a game where a lot of points weren't scored, it didn't look great offensively either side with the Bucks getting down there, but they can't capitalize, have to settle for field goals. The Panthers were in the same boat a couple of times getting deep into the red zone and had to settle for field goals. So it's nice that when there was three minutes, the game's on the line, Cam Newton and that offense walks out on the field and really just did a fantastic job. And I think one of the keys to it was absolutely that first pass to Brenton Burson for 23 yards. It's so important. As an offensive lineman, I can tell you that that first play, what's the drive starter? What's the thing that gets mm -hmm. it going and gets that uh, 
defense kind of on its heels a little bit and gets you getting some flow to what you want to get done. That was absolutely key. And obviously the touchdown at the end by Cam was important, but that pass to Brenton Burson was key. And then Kalen Clay coming up with two huge receptions, uh, targeted several times, but came up with two really great ones and one on third down. Uh, it's third down and 10. The game's on the line. And Cam had thrown to it this, this young receiver, Kalen Clay, a couple of times, and he comes up with an absolutely uh, a great catch and is able to get the first down there. And he needed that for his confidence. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I think the whole yeah. offense did. Yeah. Uh, because sometimes, and, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes if you're in a quote-unquote clinching situation, kind of tighten you up, can't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, that's what you like to see, and these guys can draw from as they go into the playoffs because every game's going to be close. There's no blowouts in the playoffs. Um, you know, it, it, it can happen occasionally, but usually it's down to the wire, and it's who can make a play when the most pressure's on. And I tell you what, this offense did a great job when it was time to score. I know Cam Newton bobbled that ball and then was able to recover it and get in the end zone, but, man, the blocking up front yeah. was unbelievable. Was and all those guys – did their assignments perfectly. But one guy I want to single out is Andrew Norwell. Because yep, after looking it. at it yep. again, he pulled around there, and he's able to block his linebacker. But we're taught as offensive linemen, especially at that guard position, you're running to a particular hole. You're trying to clear it and make it open for the running back. As he's pulling around, he sees Greg Olson, who has a really tough block. But he sees Greg Olson struggling a little bit to get that block and get movement off there. If you're pulling around and you see opposite team color, you knocked the crud out of that on the way up to yep. your guy. Thanks That's for it. cleaning that up right there. Yeah, it was about to get he, ugly. I didn't know where he was going with that. It, you, you go clean it up <laughs> and make it easy for the back. And what he does is just uh, really gives Olsen a great shoulder right there. He can pop that guy, get him off his track from getting into that hole, and then continues on to the linebacker, scores with his guy. That's what you want to do on the goal line is push your guy into the end zone. Then you're going to score. Um, to me, you know, it's it not huge. Cam. It was Andrew Norwell yeah. that made that right. play go. And, and and he had and he had the double team from from the center that allowed him to pull cleanly. There was no penetration that allowed yeah. Norwell to do exactly what KD just said. Mm -hmm. Get around cleanly up in that hole to help uh, Olsen. Look, Kevin's getting fired up there. Yeah, we I might, did. We have, might you know? have to go out and hit the one man sled. <laughs> Can I say one thing? If people look back at these podcasts the last couple of weeks, man, we've been defensive heavy. Defensive what? heavy. I'm telling you, look defensive at the Defensive champions. I'm not, not you and I. Huh? I'm just saying, it was nice to talk about some O-line. We had hey. to mix some of the trenches in there today. Rutgers outnumbered. Two two offensive uh, guys to one. Hey, But defense wins championships. No doubt. No doubt. Well said. Hey, let me uh, let me do some house cleaning here because a couple things going on, uh, Panthers.com, Panthers TV, uh, with the holidays uh, game day show coming up on Panthers Television Network. We'll move to a special time on New Year's Day. We'll be on New Year's Day. Kevin. Fantastic. Check your local listings. And as always, everything we do on Panthers TV Network, you can catch up on Panthers.com after that game because, hey, I know it says holiday on the calendar, but there are no holidays in the NFL. Not, no, not, during, not mm -hmm. during the football the season. Work week. No. Holidays move. That's why I always keep my tree up. I keep my Christmas tree up until – after the season, so I know this year it would be well up into February. There you go. Y'all heard right. that. I like that. All right. I like that. Heard so what that. you're saying is if you get tired of some amateur football on New Year's Day, you can tune into the Pro Ball and get Panthers game day on January 1st. That's what before, you're saying. Yeah, before the games. Uh, 11, did I say 11 a.m.? You said, yeah, 12. You said, I think you said 11. What is it, Rob? 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Yeah, that's why I have people look out for me. All right. Anyway. Panther fans, you know if it happens between the lines, we'll talk about it right here on All 22 because the, the film, film don't, don't lie. lie. We'll see you next time.